Hello and welcome to Physics Tutorials with Uviemine Collins Onobrakuya. Simply call me Mr. Collins. For this class, we shall be carrying out an experiment to determine the Young's modulus of a meter rule using a cantilever beam. What are the things we need for this experiment? We need a vena caliper. We need sets of masses. For this experiment, I shall be making use of three 100 gram masses and 150 gram mass. And then we need a G clamp, which can also be called a clamp. And then we need two sets of meter rules or two meter rules rather. For this experiment, I'll make use of a plastic meter rule and a wooden meter rule. What is the instruction? It says, having been provided with those items, we are to arrange our setup to look like this. So this right here stands for our clamp. It represents our clamp and then it would hold firmly the meter rule such that we can place our mass here now before we place that mass we we'll would first calculate the height of this meter rule okay and then after we place the mass the weight of the mass would cause a depression all right now we'll then find the height after the mass has been placed all right and then from the height before the mass was placed and the height after the mass is placed we will then obtain the depression okay the depression would simply be z minus y all right so that's the sum of this work here of these statements here let me just point out that we're to start with 150 grams and then we increase the mass steadily down till we get to 350 grams okay then we are provided with this equation here that that connects the mass with the depression x okay as per the correctness of this equation i will not go into that yet i'll just work with the assumption that this equation is correct but if you're going to check its correctness if you're going to test its correctness you can do so using dimensional analysis I have uploaded a video on that topic you can look at it to know how to check whether or not an equation is correct the terms in this equation are given to us b stands for the breadth t stands for the thickness e is young's modulus x stands for the depression g is acceleration due to gravity which is assumed to be 10 meters per second square for this question and then l is the length okay this protruding length is our L from this point down to where we have the mass is our L all right and then after we have done that we'll plot a graph we'll plot a graph of the mass against the depression okay and then we'll find the slope and after which we'll obtain the Young's modulus of the meter rule and then we we'll calculate the standard error in the Young's modulus. All right. How do we use a vena caliper? This is a diagram that shows us a vena caliper, a well-labeled diagram. This is the movable screw. Okay. With this, we can move the vena scale backwards or forward. We can take it away from the fixed jaw. Or closer to the fixed jaw right this is called the fixed jaw here well this is the movable jaw as we adjust this movable screw it takes this movable jaw either towards or away from the fixed jaw all right these are called the inside jaws now how does it work the jaws are used to hold firmly to hold firmly the object all right once we have a firm grip of the object we can fasten the vena caliper using this screw here okay then how do we measure the thickness this here is called the main scale it extends from zero through to one which will be somewhere behind this vena scale and then two three four five and so on down till it gets to 10 centimeters this here is called the vena scale it goes again from zero to ten however this is in centimeters such that this is three centimeters this is four centimeters so between 
these three and four here between successive values in the main scale there are 10 small calibrations it means therefore that each calibration would be 1 over 10 that's 0 0.1 which means this is 3 is 3.1 3.2 3.3 3.4 3.5 and so on now to, to measure the thickness what we do is this we look at the venous scale and then we read off the value that comes before the zero of the venous scale okay we find the value on the main scale that comes just before the zero of the venous skill let us take an example let us measure in this experiment the breadth of the meta rule here we're fasting this vena caliper at the sides the edges of the meta rule now let us zoom in we see that this is the main scale where we have these values here this three four is the main scale while this here is the venous scale all right here we have zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten okay now how do we read the breadth of this meta rule what is the value that comes before the first reading of the venous scale what is the value on the main scale that comes before the zero of the venous scale here if this is three then this line before it should be 2.5 all right 2.5 3 3.5 4 and so on now this is 2.5 so this here should be 2.6 then just after that we see our main scale okay so the first thing we know about the breadth of this meter rule is it is 2.6 right now what value comes after that we'll look for the reading on the venous scale that matches precisely with that on the venous scale what do i mean you can see this is a zero point it is a bit in front of this line on the main scale so we can't use that the same also with this that's the one scale the same also with the two and then if we look at this three here the third line here matches beautifully with the main scale you can see it aligns perfectly well Okay, so this is 0 .00, 0 .01, 0 0.0, and this is 0 0.03. All right, 0 0.03. So it means on the main scale we have 2.6, on the venous scale we have 0 0.03. Now, please note, it is not because of the three up here that we have said we have three no it's because it's the third line on the venous scale that matches perfectly with a reading on the main scale okay so the value therefore is 2.63 2.6 is gotten from the main scale and your 0 0.3 is gotten from this value here because it's the third line all right so we can say therefore that the width of the meter rule is 2.63 the width or the breadth of the meter rule is 2.63 centimeters if you didn't understand that let us try and get it from the thickness here we see how the vena caliper has been used to um has been used to measure or has had a firm grip rather on the meter rule okay here let us zoom in and see what the value is for this one there is no value behind the vena scale Okay, which means we have zero point something. Okay, now the next thing to ask ourselves is where exactly does the venous scale align with the main scale? If I look at these readings on the venous scale, I can see the very first one has a beautiful alignment with the venous scale. Okay, now where does this occur? If this is one, and this is two, this should be 1.5 here. This is one again, right? This will be 0 0.9 and this will be 0 0.8 that is the point that gives us a clear alignment now there will be no values before that okay there will be no values before that because there are no values behind the vena scale here so the only value we would use here is 0 0.8 centimeters all right
I hope you got that right. If you didn't, I'll explain it just one more time. Let me start with this. If you get it right, you can afford to fast forward the video. If you don't, you can listen again intensely. We zoomed in here. There are two skills. There's the main skill and there's the Vena skill. The Vena skill has 10 calibrations. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. After taking the reading on the main skill, which appears before the Vena skill, we then take the reading on the Vena skill that matches perfectly with that on the main skill. So the reading on the main skill that occurs before the Vena skill reading is 2.6. This here is 2.5, so this is 2.6. After the 2.6, we then see the Vena scale. All right. Now, which line on the Vena scale matches with the main scale? This is one, this is two, and this is three. It aligns perfectly. All right. So we have 2.6 from the main scale and three from the Vena scale, which gives us 2.63. Well, for this, for the thickness, there are no values behind the Vena scale. So we have zero points and then we'll look for where the Vena scale aligns with the main scale here it does so on the eighth mark that's the 0 0.8 centimeters mark okay don't forget this is 10 so this is 0 0.9 this is 0 0.8 all right and for that we have the thickness to be 0 0.80 centimeter i believe that is clear we are told to clamp the meter rule so that a length of 60 sorry of 80 centimeters projects if you look at this calibration this is 80 centimeters or better still you could turn it this way so that you can easily read off the value if from here to here is 20 it means the length that projects will be 80 centimeters because the full length of a meter rule is 100 centimeters so fixing this to be exactly 20 centimeters we can then place our clamp how does the clamp work we can make it go wider by turning it this way and then we merge it just to ensure that the distance you need is accurate and then we fasten the clamp when this is done we are sure we have set up our experiment properly the instruction says measure the distance z from the free end of the meter rule to the floor with that i will apply the second meter rule then i'll come over to the free end and measure its distance from the floor okay without trying to alter the height without pressing it down or lifting it up just where it is at equilibrium i measure so i can see the value i could turn the meter rule to face my direction and from observation this is 70 it's not 72 i would say 71.9 71.9 centimeters all right the next instruction says place a mass of 150 grams near the free end and measure the distance y from the free end over here i have a mass of 100 gram and then another mass of 50 grams together that is 150 grams i would place them together I would use a cello tape and then when they are placed together I would place them at the free end of the meter row when this is done would observe a depression yeah the decline and then it says we should measure the new heights again i take the second meter rule and i measure the heights the height here appears to me to be 63.5 63 points okay i would say that is point four 
Yes, 3.4 centimeters. We are going to repeat experiments with the masses 200 grams, 250 grams, 300 and 350 grams. But do not forget to always measure the height before you load it with your mass. So, we expected to plot a graph of the mass, the masses against the depression, okay, the variation in the mass against the variation in the depression. Now, the next thing is for us to choose a suitable scale for us to plot the graph. Now, the question is, how do we go about choosing the right scale? I have laid down steps that will follow for us to choose appropriate scale. The first step is to, from our table of values, identify the highest value of the quantity that needs to be plotted. Now, on the y-axis, we are plotting the mass. The highest value on the y-axis, or the highest value for the mass, is 350. Okay? The next thing for us to do is to count the number of big boxes that we have along that y-axis. For the graph I'm going to be using for this, for this experiment, we have 14 big boxes along the x-axis. The next step, okay, now, you should know that each of these boxes represents one centimeter for some graphs, and for some it is two. For the one I'll be making use of, it represents two centimeters. Now, the next thing for us to do is to divide this highest number here by the number of big boxes, which means 300 divided by 14, and that gives us 24. Next, we have to plot our graph. Now, I have extracted the values we need, or the parts of the table that we need to plot our graph. Okay, we have mass against depression, and beneath that is the scale we have chosen to use, or the scale we have found to be most suitable for this graph. Okay, so here we have our graph. It's important to note some things here. One, it is the fact that we have written the title of the graph on top. And try to do that when you're writing your exams. You ensure you write the title of your graph on top of it. The next thing to always ensure you do is to ensure that you label the axis correctly. We're putting a graph of mass on the y-axis, on the vertical axis. Now, our mass is in grams, so we have M in bracket G, which means mass in grams. And then for the y, for the x-axis or for the horizontal axis, we have the depression X in centimeters. Okay, it's important to do that. Now, the next thing you must know is what each of the small boxes stand for. Our scale was to tell us what each of the big boxes stand for. Now, on the x-axis, we said we have 2 centimeters to 2 units. So between our zero and this, which is two centimeters, we have two units on the horizontal. And then for the vertical, we have two centimeters to 25 units. Like I said, I have skipped the 25, so as to have a neat graph, all right? You can still put them if you wish to, okay? Now, what does each small box here stand for? Since there are 10 small divisions between zero and two, it implies that each of these divisions is 2 divided by 10, which gives us 0 0.2. This implies that we have 0. The next is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 1 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, and then 2.0. All right? And then for the y-axis or for the vertical axis, we have... Zero. Now we said between zero and two centimeters, we said we have 25 units. Since there are 10 small boxes within our two centimeters, it means each small box is 25 divided by 10, and that gives us 2.5. It means we have zero, 2.5, 5.0, 7.5, 10.5. Fifteen point zero, seventeen point five, twenty point zero, twenty-two point five, and then twenty-five point zero. So there's a steady increment of two point five. All right. Now let's plot our first point. First point here we have when our mass is at one fifty grams, 
the depression that was produced was 8.5 centimeters. So observe the depression of 8.5. Now this is 8, 8.2, 8.4, and then 8.6. So where do we put our 8.5? Now there is no line here. So we cannot use the middle. We can't use the center. Why? It is not calibrated. All right, students are fond of making a mistake. Please don't do that. Okay, use only the points that are calibrated. Okay. So if this is eight, if this is eight, this is eight point two, this is eight point four, this is eight point six. It's either you use eight point four or you use eight point six. All right. Now, if you're going to stick with, if you're going to work with eight point four, it means all through your experiment, all through your graph. You use the lower values whenever you have a similar scenario. All right? If you're going to use 8.6, it means all through the plotting of your graph, you should use, should be consistent with using the higher value whenever you have such scenarios. So in this case, I would stick with 8.4. As such, I have this as my first point. Okay? Similarly, for 200 mass, for 200 gram mass, rather, we have. 10 centimeters as the depression of this point and then subsequent points are plotted as well and then the last one there is next thing for us is to draw a line of best fit the first rule of thumb for the line of best fit is it is the line that or it must pass through as many points as possible okay now the next rule is this the points that are not on the line should be similar amounts to the left and to the right what does that mean here this is our line of best fit it goes through three out of five points and then the points which are not on the line the outliners we have one to the left as our second reading and then there is one to the right which is our last reading here okay so since there are two points which are not on the line we have one to the left and one to the right it's important to know that if there are three points which are not on the line, you can have two to the left and one to the right. If it's just one point, it can be anywhere, either to the left or to the right. Next thing for us is to plot our slope or to find our slope rather. Now, our slope should be at least one third of our graph, which means not too small and not too big. Okay, for this graph, I would have this as my slope. Okay, what I do is ensure. I use points that I can easily read off. I can tell what this value is both on the vertical scale and on the horizontal scale that's down to the x-axis. All right. Similarly, for this point here, I can tell what its value corresponds to on the vertical axis. All right. And then what its value corresponds to on the horizontal axis. Okay, let us trace them down. If we trace this value down, if we trace this line down, we'll obtain 15.2 and 8.4. All right, let me explain. This is 8.0, is 8.2, and this is 8.4. All right, and then on this side, we have this is 14, 14.2, 14.4, 14.6, 14.8, 15.2. Right on the y axis or the vertical axis, it's easy to spot our point. We have 150 and 300. We'll draw lines to trace them. There we have it. Next thing to do is to find our slope. The formula for the slope is our slope is the change in the quantity on the y axis over the change in the quantity on the x axis. All right. Now, the quantity on the y or the quantity on the vertical axis is the mass, while the quantity on the horizontal axis is the depression x, which means we'll write our slope as the change in mass over the change in depression. All right, using the values we have been able to identify for our slope, we would have a slope of 22.06 grams per centimeter. Alright, next thing we're told to do is to find the Young's modulus. How do we do this? We look at the equation we were given. 
The question is m equals bt cube e x over 4gl where b is the breadth of the meter rule c is its thickness e is the Young's modulus x is the depression 4 is a constant g is acceleration due to gravity and l is the length of the meter rule not the full length but the length that is outside our table okay so which of the values of the mass should we use we had masses varying from 150 gram to 350 gram with a steady increment of 50 and then we had the corresponding values of depression so which of the values of the mass and the depression should we use the answer is none of them you're surprised now let me explain what we should do here is to compare the given equation with the equation of a straight line which is y equals mx plus c where y stands for the vertical axis x stands for the quantity on the horizontal axis m stands for the slope and c stands for the intercept it means a graph of mass on the vertical or the y axis against depression on the x axis would give us a slope of bt cube e over 4gl it means we can equate our bt cube e over 4gl to the slope if we do that it implies that the Young's modulus E is equal to 4GLS over BT cube. So you see, we don't need to use any of the values of the mass or the depression. We simply use the slope. Okay? Now, what are the values? We have obtained earlier the values of L, the values of uh, S, we obtain the value of B and the value of C. Okay? Now, we're given the value of G to be 10 meters per second squared. However, we cannot use this. Why? Because the instruments we used are calibrated in centimeters. Okay? The instruments we used are calibrated in centimeters. Let me use a white pen here so you can see clearly okay so if we have our g to be equal to 10 meters per second squared we must convert it to centimeters per second squared so that we are consistent with the units now how do we convert from meters per second squared to centimeter per second squared we know that one meter is equal to a hundred centimeters one meter equals a hundred centimeters it means therefore that 10 meters per second squared will be equal to 10 times a hundred centimeters per second squared and that would give us a thousand centimeters per second squared so that is what we're going to be making use of as the value of g okay so would have don't forget our l was 80 our S we found it to be 26.06. The breadth was 2.63 and the thickness was 0 0.8. In all, we have 5.2424 times 10 to the power 6 grams per second square centimeter cube. However, for this question, we're told to ensure that the units are the standard units, which means we shouldn't use gram, we should use kilograms, and we shouldn't use centimeter cube, we should use meter cube. So how then do we convert? We know that 10 to the power 3 grams, which means 1,000 grams, make up 1 kilogram. So, a kilogram here is equal to 1,000 grams. And then, a meter cube is equal to 100 centimeters, all cube. All right, our 10 to the power 2 is the same as 100. Now, so what I tell my students, 1 meter, we said, is equal to 100 centimeters right as such one meter cube is going to be equal to a hundred centimeters cube which means we have a hundred 
to power 3 centimeters to power 3. Your 100 to power 3 is the same thing as our 10 to power 2 to power 3. All right? And that will give us 10 to power 6 centimeters cube. All right? So that explains why we have 10 to power 6 centimeters cube. And then if we play with this, the numerator would cancel out 10 to power 3 from the denominator leaving behind 10 to power 3. All right? So I've been able to show that 1 kg per second squared meter cube equals 1 over 10 to power 3 grams per second square cm cube. All right? Now, what should we do next? We can cross multiply. Our 10 to power 3 multiplies 1 and as such, it's no more here. And all we have left is 1 gram per second square centimeter cube. So be equal to, since we have cross multiplied, our 10 to power 3 moves this way, right? And as such, we have 10 to power 3 kilograms per second square meter cube. It means for us to convert from our grams per second square meter cube to our kilograms per second, sorry, from our grams per second square centimeter cube to our kilograms per second square meter cube, we must multiply by 10 to the power 3, which is a thousand. If we do that, we'll have the value of Young's modulus for this experiment to be 5.2424 times 10 to the power 9 kilograms per second square meter cube. All right? Don't forget, all these are based on the assumption that the formula we were provided with in the question is dimensionally correct. All right. But then this is not the end, but also ask to find the error in the slope. How do we find the error in the slope? Now we go back to the formula. Don't forget when we made our Young's modulus, the subject of the formula, we had this expression E equals 4GLS over BT cube. Now, the error in our Young's modulus would come from the error in our slope and the error in our measuring instrument. Okay? Our 4 is a constant. There is no error there. We're given G as a constant, 10 meters per second squared. All right? It wasn't measured by us, at least. Okay? So, the error, therefore, in our Young's modulus comes from the error in L times the error in the slope over the error in the breadth times the cube of the error in the thickness. Now, how do we get the error in our thickness and breadth? Both instrument, both thickness and breadth were measured using a vena caliper. So what is the error in a vena caliper? The rule of thumb here is that the error or the uncertainty of any measuring instrument is half of its smallest increment. Now, what is the smallest increment of a vena caliper? This is our vena caliper. From the main scale, we have centimeters. This is 4, for instance. This is 5. Now, this is separated by 1 centimeter, right? Now, within the 1 centimeter, there are also smaller, there are 10 smaller divisions, which means on the main scale, we have 0 0.1 centimeter as the smallest increment. However, the vena scale breaks down even this into one tenth okay it breaks it down by 10 which means the smallest reading therefore for a vena caliper is 0 0.1 divided by 10 which gives us 0 0.01 centimeter so this is the smallest increment of a vena what caliper which implies therefore that the error in a vena caliper is half of this all right and as such, we have the error in the breadth, which is the same thing as the error in the thickness, so the 0.05 centimeters, because they were both measured using the same instrument, which is a vena caliper. Now, think about the error in the meter rule. This is a picture of a meter rule. We have 30 here, and then we have 31. In between, there are 10 small divisions, which means between 1 centimeter, there are 10 small divisions. As such, we'll have 
the smallest increment to be 1 cm divided by 10 which gives us 0 0.1 cm now for this one there are no vernal scales here so this is the smallest increment for a meter rule as such the error in a meter rule becomes 0 0.1 divided by 2 which gives us 0 0.05 centimeters next we find the error in our slope so to obtain the error in slope the formula to use is delta s equals 4 w over nr where our w stands for the vertical scatter our n stands for the number of points and our r stands for the range in the x-axis how do we get the vertical scatter this is our graph we draw lines through the outliners such that the line drawn is parallel to the line of best fit okay this is our first outliner which is our second reading okay and then the second outliner is the highest value we have here the last value we have here all right there are the two outliners as, and so we draw lines through them such that the lines drawn are parallel to the line of best fit so we have these are the lines okay next thing to do is to find the vertical reading between the lines i could use this point here if i start here i have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there are ten small boxes between the parallel lines don't forget we said along the vertical axis each box represents 2.5 grams so if there are 10 small boxes when each box stands for 2.5 grams it means a w which is the vertical scatter is 2.5 times 10 and that gives us 25 grams okay next up we said n stands for the number of points we have five points plotted on this graph and then r is the range the range is the difference between the highest and lowest value okay here we are talking about the range in the x-axis okay what was the quantity we plotted on our x-axis it was the depression all right now for the depression the maximum value we had was 18.1 and the lowest was 8.5 and the difference is 9.6 with that we find the error in slope to be 2.08 grams per centimeter all right we then infuse the error in the slope along with the error in the length the breadth and the thickness to find the we infuse them into the equation for the error in the young's modulus and then we can find the value so the error in young's modulus is given by delta e equals delta l times delta s over delta b times delta b t cube okay Delta L is the error in the length. We found that to be 0.05 centimeters for the breadth and thickness because they are measured by the same instrument. They will have the same error, which is 0.005 centimeters. We have talked about that. And then for the error in the slope, we just calculated that to be 2.08 grams per centimeter. We put these together. We have our delta E, the error in Young's modulus, to be 1.664 times 10 to power 8 grams per second square centimeter cube and if you have to convert this to the standard units of kilograms and meter cube we just multiply by 10 to the power 3 which we said earlier and as such that would give us 1.664 times 10 to the power 11 kilograms per second square meter cube i hope you have enjoyed watching this video and i hope you have learned so much share it subscribe to it so that you can be notified when other videos are released and also give it a thumbs up okay Thanks for watching.